Ireland is rich in wildlife and because of its isolation, there are hundreds of plants and animals that evolved here that are found nowhere else. But human introduced pests have threatened and even wiped out many species. One of those is the native Wetapunga. It's one of the world's heaviest insects and has been around for 190 million years, even outliving the dinosaurs. They used to be found all over New Zealand, but now they're close to extinction. These amazing ancient creatures play a vital role in the ecosystem, and without them, other native plants and wildlife could also disappear forever. The Auckland Zoo has launched a set of programs to save the Wetapunga or Weta, starting with a new interactive exhibition that aims to excite the next generation about insects. like a bug's lair. Featuring giant 3D model insects with educational games and puzzles, Bug Lab shows just how fascinating insects are. That's like a rhinoceros species, I think. So what, what, what do you like about these? They look really big. And you don't see these every day. But these are really cool to look at. These children have never seen a wetapunga, yet had they lived several generations ago, they would have spotted them in the garden. Learning Centre guide Kirsty McFarlane explains why we should all care more about our native insects. They're fascinating and people just dismiss them. And not only that, they're really, really important for the environment. I mean, it's how everything works together and without insects, we wouldn't be here. How important is it to teach younger people about insects? Well, they're the future, right? So they're the ones that are going to have to be helping to, to keep insects safe and to stop them from becoming endangered. If they can really connect with insects at that young age and, and, be, and fall in love with them, I guess, then that's going to be great for our future. Exhibitions can be great for raising awareness for causes, but it's just on the other side of the zoo that some really significant work is being done to protect and revive the threatened Wetapunga. I'm meeting Ben Goodwin, an entomologist at Auckland Zoo's Wetapunga breeding program. Hey, Ben. Hey. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? This is where our Wetapunga are kept. After you. This is one of the world's only industrialised insect conservation programs providing the optimum light and temperature conditions for wetapunga. So these are the ones that you've bred? Yep, so we've got some adult wetapunga in here. That's incredible. This is massive. They're one of the heaviest insects in the world. So this is an adult female, so they don't get too much bigger than this. Wetapunga can weigh up to 70 grams. That's the equivalent of three small mice. Do you think I can hold yeah, I her? Think you can. The hooks are a bit sharp. Wow. That's incredible. Do they jump? Do they fly? No, nope, so they're totally flightless. They've got really good camouflage. They're nocturnal. So they're very, very well adapted for um, bird predators, um, but mammals can just smell them out. So is that why it started to die out? They were considered really common in the sort of middle part of the 1800s, and then humans accidentally established rats in New Zealand, and by the turn of the century, they were basically extinct everywhere aside from one island. So besides the fact that they're incredible, why would you save the Wetapunga? They have a, a important functions to play in the ecology. So it eats foliage, it does massive poos, and they wow. fertilise the ground. Um, there are species which I read about in books as a kid, so I feel quite privileged to be working with them now. The breeding program started in 2012 with only 12 Weta. Since then, over 3,500 insects have been released onto a few key islands which still provide the ideal conditions for them to flourish. Today, Ben's readying a batch for transport. So these will be the easiest ones to do, because they're the largest ones. So this whole thing comes out. They like to hide in these little tubes. It's tiny. And is this the size that you want to be taking to the island? Yeah, once they've got a bit of size on them, they're a little bit more robust, they've got fewer predators, then they're safe to go out into the wild. Just pop her. Yep, here. if you just touch her with your. Yep, just the one. Oh. Right, so that's the first female, so I'll just do a tally here. And what's the success rate of your breeding program? Up to about 80% survival rate, which is really, really good. Yeah. Do, they, do you think they're upset that we've woken them up? I'm sure they are. <laughs> <laughs>
That's fine. We've got, we've got somewhere to hang on to. Okay, great. So that's everything which we're going to be releasing tonight. Let's get out of here. With our 385 wetter packed and ready to move, it's time to head to the docks. We're off to a private island in the Hauroki Gulf, one of four still hospitable to Weta. It's a one-hour boat journey from the mainland. Rod and Sue Noroita, the island's owners, are avid conservationists who have given their land over to the protection of native species. Hello, you must be Rod. Yeah, I am. Hi, Yara. 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 And Sue? Hi, Yara. I'm Sue. Yara. Have you always been involved in the releases? As much as possible. In 2003, Rod and Sue finally rid the island of invasive mammals like rats, stoats and feral cats, making it a safe home for Wetapunga. We've never really looked at ourselves as owners, but more as um, guardians of this uh, wonderful place that we've had the privilege of growing up in. How does releasing the Wetapunga onto the island actually fit into all of your plans? So they're critical to the health of the island. Nothing exists in isolation. So the Wetapunga are a bit of a, one of the missing links mm -hmm. for building Absolutely. up the ecosystem It's here. part of the jigsaw. Even though Weta are a crucial piece of the landscape here, the young insects still need to be handled carefully, which means selecting the perfect spot for their new home. This is like a wildlife paradise. <laughs> How do you choose the sites where you release Weta? Yeah, so this is one of our release sites here. Um, so we want to look uh, for a place that's got lots of hiding spots and somewhere that's got lots and lots of good food plants as well. Oh my goodness, this is incredible. Yeah. How, how old is this tree? So it's estimated to be about 800 years old. You can see there's a fecal pellet from um, one of the wetapunga. Oh, that's, so that's massive. A good way to um, sometimes detect their presence if you can't actually find them. And that's obviously really important for the ecosystem here. Yeah, so that's all packed full of nutrients, so they're just recycling what they're eating and that's good for the, the plants and the soil health. Finding these droppings isn't only a sign of a healthy environment, but also evidence of an already thriving population that will surely welcome newcomers. This is kind of the ideal spot, probably the best place in the whole island for them to um, be released into. Because it's got heaps and heaps and heaps of hidey holes for wetapungas. Here's one of their preferred food plants. Yeah. They can go from this tree and disperse right across the whole forest here because it's got a huge crown on it. The wetter will be released at night when they are most active. This pink tape will help us find this spot in the dark later on. I can't believe they've trusted me with these wetters. <laughs> All right, it's the start of the release site here. Yep. <laughs> you can see how much more active they are than this morning. And there you go. There she goes. The first one in. Are we going to release more on this trunk? No, we'll move. I think we'll move along. Yeah. And you go. So how important is it for you to re-establish Wetapunga here? Oh, it's awesome because it's uh, just giving back something that probably would have been here years and years ago. Hopefully the droppings will add to the forest. Come on. No, he's feisty. He wants to. Another one? Yep. Maybe just give him a real soft touch on the back. Yeah. There you go. Oh. So how much longer do you think you'll be doing these sorts of releases for? We've got a few more releases to do, and then um, after that, it's mainly just monitoring the populations. Cool. That one's a big one. Wetapunga now exists on four islands. As invasive predators are slowly removed from other locations, that number is expected to rise. The hope is that one day, Wetapunga could return to the mainland where they once thrived. There is certainly the will for change here in New Zealand. More people and institutions are taking action in support of native species. The government has even committed to rid the country of human-introduced pests by 2050. 
There is still a long way to go, but at least the future is now looking optimistic for the wetter punga. Thank you.